Video 56 for Math Lesson 8.5, Fractions of Fractions. In the math message, you were asked to solve the problems at the top part of page 259. Grab your math journal, and I would like you to check over your work. Okay, there was a number line provided for you, in case you needed it. Let's look at number one. What is half of three? you should have gotten one and a half. If you take the number line from zero to three and divide it in half, right here is where you end up, which is at our one and a half point. Number two, what is one fourth of two? One half. If you go from zero to two, divide it into four equal parts, you're gonna have divisions here, here, here. One fourth right here is actually at the one-half point on the number line. Number three, what is three-fourths of two? One and a half. Number four, one-third of three would be one. Number five, half of half, one-fourth. Number six, half of one-fourth, one-eighth. Number seven, half of three-fourths, three-eighths. Number eight, one-fourth of one-half, one-eighth. Number nine, one-fourth of one-fourth, one-sixteenth. And number ten, half of three-eighths will be three-sixteenths. Be prepared to be able to explain how you figure out the answer to problem ten. What I did was I went from 0 to 3 eighths on this number line. Okay, so here's 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths. And then I figured out what would be exactly halfway in between there, which is right here. And so I know that that is my 3 sixteenths line. 1 sixteenths, 2 sixteenths, 3 sixteenths. That's how I figured it out. Maybe you figured it out in a different way. We're going to start working with multiplying fractions. Now sometimes you'll have to multiply a fraction times a whole number, so we're going to look at some strategies for doing that. There are several ways to show the multiplication of a whole number and a fraction. Here's the number line model. One way to multiply a fraction and a whole number is to think about hops on a number line. The whole number tells how many hops to make, and the fraction tells how long each hop should be. For example, to find 4 times 2 thirds, Imagine taking four hops, each two-thirds of a unit long, on a number line. Where do you end up? Right here, two and two-thirds. Another strategy you can use is the addition model. You can use addition to multiply a fraction and a whole number. For example, to find four times two-thirds, draw four models of two-thirds, then add all of the fractions. This is, this is often called repeated addition if you're um, multiplying. So 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, you get 8 thirds. And then, of course, you're going to need to simplify that. 8 divided by 3 is 2 with a remainder of 2 thirds. So 2 and 2 thirds. I don't recommend this model because it works easily here when your numbers are smaller, but um, what if you're doing like 37 times 4 fifths? I mean, that would be a pretty big addition problem. You can also use the area model. Think of the problem 2 thirds times 4 as what is 2 thirds of an area that has 4 square units? Remember, 2 thirds of 4 means 2 thirds times 4. So you could like draw four squares with each an area of one square unit. The rectangle has an area of four square units. Then divide the rectangle into three equal strips, so you're making thirds here, and shade two strips, okay, to show two thirds of the area. The shaded area equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight thirds, okay? There's eight small rectangles here. Each of them has an area of one-third. So two-thirds of four square units equals eight-thirds square units, which 
If we simplify that, like we did in the last problem, we get 2 and 2 thirds. You can also use unit fractions to find the whole. And I highly recommend this um, strategy. It works almost all of the time. A fraction with 1 in the numerator is called a unit fraction. For example, the fractions 1 half, 1 third, 1 fourth, 1 fifth, they're all unit fractions. 1 seventeenth, 1 ninth, okay? Unit fractions can often be helpful in solving problems with fractions. Let's take a look at an example. Alex collects sports cards. 70 of his cards feature basketball players. These 70 cards are two thirds of Alex's collection. How many sports cards does Alex have? Well, we know that two thirds of the collection is 70 cards cards. So two-thirds of something equals 70. Well, so I need to figure out what would one-third be, right? So if I took my um, if I took my, I'm sorry, if I lost my train of thought. If I take a look at my parts and my whole, okay, two-thirds means two parts out of 3 to make the whole thing. 2 thirds is 70. So 70 is making up 2 of the parts. If I divide 70 by 2, I know that I can know how much 1 third of the collection is. So 1 third of the collection is 35 cards. Well, if 1 third of the collection is 35 cards, all I need to do is multiply that by 3 to figure out the whole collection. Because remember, 3 thirds three of those one-third groups would be the whole thing. So three times 35 equals 105. So therefore we know that Alex has 105 cards in his whole collection. So in this situation I just I, did, I, I didn't know what the whole was. I knew the part but I didn't know the whole. I was trying to find that out. So I had to divide by my numerator and then I multiplied by my denominator. Let's take a look at another example. Alicia baked cookies. She gave away 24 cookies, which was three-fifths of the total she baked. How many cookies did Alicia bake? Well, we know that three-fifths of Alicia's cookies is 24 cookies. So one-fifth of Alicia's cookies is eight cookies, because we take that 24, divide by three. Now, the whole batch of cookies, which is five-fifths, would be five times eight, because we got five groups, of 8. So 5 times 8 is 40 cookies. Alicia baked 40 cookies. Pause the video here and complete journal page 259, then resume the video. Okay, you have completed page 259. I would like you to check your work. You can pause this and check your work and then resume. Now, continuing on with multiplying fractions. We were multiplying a fraction times a whole number. Well, what about when you multiply two fractions? Well, thinking about area can help. Let's say our question is, what is 3 fourths of 2 thirds? So I have to think, how much is 3 fourths of 2 thirds of this rectangular region here? Okay, so this is my whole box. Here's how I can do this. I can shade 2 thirds of the region this way. So I'm going to make thirds going in this direction and I'm going to shade two-thirds. So now I've shown two-thirds. Now I'm going to take my other fraction, three-fourths, and I'm going to shade it in a different way. So instead of going across like I did with thirds, I'm going to divide it going vertically here. So I'm going to divide it into fourths, kind of um, imagining that this part is not there right now. So here's my one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths that I shade and they're four-fourths. I'm not going to shade that part. Okay. Notice how I shaded it in a different way. Well, the part that is overlapping here, that's crisscrossed in both ways, is the answer. Okay. So I just look, it is six boxes out of 12 total boxes. So it's six twelfths, or one half, of the whole region. Okay. Pretty cool how that works out. I'm looking for the part that gets doubly shaded. So turn your journal to page 260. Now you have some problems to practice. They talk about paper folding 
because what they're um, really thinking is that you can do this with an actual piece of paper. Okay, and what we're drawing in the book here is just basically a, a picture representation of what you can do with the paper. If you want to try it with paper, go for it. That'd be awesome. You don't have to, but that'd be cool. All right, so it tells us to sketch the folds in the shading and write an X on the parts that show the answer. So here's our first problem, half of half. Now here's how we do this. We take the first fraction. It really doesn't matter what order we do it in, but to take the first fraction. Divide your whole rectangle into whatever it is. So in this case, we're talking half. Okay, so I'm going to divide it in half vertically. And then I'm going to shade half. And I'm going to use um, like diagonal lines like, like this. And I want you to be in practice doing the same. Okay, notice how I'm going like in all the same direction. Okay, so there's half. Now, this represents my first fraction. Now, I want to deal with my second fraction. Again, it's half. This time, I'm going to divide it going horizontally. So I'm going to use the opposite direction. Okay, so divided it in half, and I'm going to shade half. And when I shade this half, I'm going to do my... Um, like diagonals in a different direction. You don't have to use a different color. I just am um, to show you more clearly, but make your di diagonals going across in a different direction. And now I'm shading half because my second fraction is half. Okay, now here's what we're looking for. We're looking for the part that was double shaded. Okay, so you can see here that this part here was double shaded. All right, that's our answer. How much does this part represent of our whole rectangle? It is one out of four total boxes. So the answer is one fourth. Cool, huh? Let's try the second one. Okay, we've got two thirds of one half. So my first one is two thirds, my first fraction, so I'm going to make thirds. And I'm doing this kind of quickly because I'm running out of time here on my video. But So here's two thirds and I'm going to shade two thirds of it. All in the same direction. Okay, now I have shown two thirds. Now I'm going to work with my second fraction, which is one half. I'm going to work in a different direction. So I'm going to divide it in half this way. I'm dividing my whole rectangle in half this way. And I'm going to shade one half. And remember, when I shade my one half this time, I'm making my diagonal shade lines in the opposite direction. Now, we need to look for the part that's overlapping. Which parts got double shaded? And we're, let's pretend that these are equal. They should all be equal, shouldn't they? But humans aren't perfect, so I didn't make quite equal. Okay, two of these boxes are double shaded. So two boxes out of one, two, three, four, five, six total boxes Okay, so the answer is two sixths, or if you can see here that it can be reduced to one third. Two divided by two is one, six divided by two is three. Okay, now, hopefully that technique makes sense. Go ahead and give it a try. Um, finish the problems on page 260 and 261, and we'll compare your work and take a look at the answers in our next class.